from Grow Your Enjoy and this video is going to show some updates on the garden and some cooking that I did on August 11th and 12th and I hope you enjoy. Thank you for joining me. Update on the corn. I mean it's okay that things are eating it. I'm happy they're enjoying it because it definitely had some pollination issues but that's fine too. Um, I can still use the stalks to decorate for um, the fall which was one of my goals and the animals get some food out of the deal so um, I'll have to look into that. This is my first time growing corn, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I definitely have flea beetles on my potatoes. Here is one. Um, I have this soap, and I'm going to mix it with some water in the sprayer. And I So I tested it on a few plants yesterday, and the plants didn't die. So I think it's safe to use in this heat. Um, I know you can put rubbing alcohol in with it, but I'm a little nervous to do that given the heat. I mean, the rubbing alcohol might be totally fine and I might end up using it after this treatment. Um, but we're gonna start with just the soap and see what happens. I like to try to do the simplest solution first and see if it works before doing anything else. All right, this is my empty potato bed. Um, I ended up having to pull everything. They just really weren't producing. I think the flea beetles got the best of them. This bed also doesn't have the best moisture. Um, so I still got some to eat and I'll try again next year. Tonight I'm making a salad with cucumbers from the garden. I already started cutting them up and some tomatoes from the garden. These are green zebra tomatoes and these are just a red salad tomato and then i have romaine lettuce from the farmer's market that i've already washed and i just need to dry and i'm gonna see if i have anything else to put on the salad and then i'll be um searing up some scallops for dinner too and these scallops i had frozen they were actually 50 percent off they were perfectly fine still within date um the store just had too many of them I also have some carrots that need to be used up and this yellow pepper left over from, I have this yellow pepper left over from fajitas the other night. So we'll cut up some of that and cut up some carrots. I don't think I'm gonna use all of this pepper. Um, I'll probably just use a little and save the rest for later. I'm going to prep all of it right now. And whatever I don't use, we'll save for like fresh eating for snacks and things. So I'm just putting some of this yellow bell pepper in the salad. Um, and then I have the tomatoes, the cucumbers, the romaine, carrots. And then if either of us want, we have cheese gluten-free croutons, and um, we have all different dressings we can choose from. I have my scallops cooking in this cast iron pan with some olive oil. I'm going to leave them for two minutes on this side, flip them over, add a little bit of butter, salt and pepper, and that'll be it. And then I'll do the second batch. Two minutes was not long enough. I don't think I have the heat high enough. Um, I did turn it down because the oil was kind of spitting and I didn't want to make a mess, but um, I added some black pepper and I decided I'm not going to add any salt because I have salted butter. All right, it looks like they're seared enough. Oh, some of them are, and some of them not, are not. I think it depends on where they are in the pan. All right. That's fine. I've never done this before, so we're just gonna go with it.
too much butter. Here's my plate. It's not beautiful, but it is delicious. I have um, the scallops, my salad that we made with all the garden and farm farmer's market produce. Um, and then on the salad, I have some green olives that I'm trying to use up. Some of these gluten-free croutons and just some balsamic dressing. And then I also have um, some of the corn left over from fajitas because I didn't want to waste it. The other day I picked my butternut squash. One of them, um, I definitely know the plant was killed by vine borers and I didn't think it was fully cured and I was right, it's starting to rot. The other one I actually think is fine. I think the vine died because it was ready. Um, but I'm actually, this tiny one is not enough for a meal. So I'm gonna cut both of them up and see what's good on them and we can have them for dinner. I just realized that I think this might be a honey nut squash and I don't know if these seeds will do anything because I'm pretty sure they're um, an immature seed. I mean, they feel kind of hard. They might be fine. Um, so I'm going to try to save some seeds from these. If they really are a honey nut, they might be cross-pollinated, but I'll definitely get some kind of butternut because I have honey nut squash and butternut squash. I totally forgot that I planted that I planted um honey nut. So that might be what these are, and that might be why one of them um, one of the vines died off and it and it's okay because they might be full, full grown. It's very sad that um, I wasted this much, but I just didn't have time to get to them yesterday. So, it'll still be fine. We'll still get some good food out of it. And um, I didn't used to peel them. I used to just root roast them whole, but I found out that I actually like eating butternut squash cubed and roasted a lot better, and then we don't waste as much. So now I just peel the whole thing if the skin is um, soft enough, which most butternut squash, it's soft enough to peel. Um, I just make sure I'm always peeling away from me because it can give you some resistance and then I'll cube it up and we'll roast it with dinner. Oh, there's another spot that's no good. Another spot that's no good. There we go. Cut it out. Just because something has a blemish on it or a bad spot um, for produce especially, you can just usually cut it out as long as the rest of the fruit or vegetable looks okay. So I'm going to chop this up into cubes. And put it in a container in the refrigerator so when it's time for dinner, all I have to do is toss it in some oil and put some seasoning on it and it will be so good. Yeah, this looks almost right, but I'm pretty sure that even though it was killed by 
vine borers. It was pretty close, and that's definitely what I'm looking at. These are not butternut squash. They're honey nut, which is even better because I have tried to grow honey nut squash for the last two years, and I've had no luck, and then I just end up buying them at Trader Joe's because they're so sweet and delicious. Um, and now we have two of our own. Let's do this one. Because that definitely was not enough for a meal. When I cook a meal, I like to have um, some leftovers from each meal that we can do for lunches or dinner another night. I don't always have time to cook every single night, but I like to eat food that is homemade every day. So by cooking a little more, when I do cook, we can stretch it over a few days for lunches or another dinner and it kind of saves time that way and it makes sure that we're using everything that we have and it doesn't go bad. Yeah, this looks like it was almost ready. The skin is definitely thicker. So I'm thinking that if I had left it out there, this vine was not completely dried out. If I had left it out there a few more days, this would have been cured and totally fine for storage. And it's definitely a honey nut, so I'll know that for next year. I'm really bad about labeling things, so I'll have to um, I'll have to label better next year, maybe. I always say that, and I never do, so we'll see what happens. But either way, we still got food, and that's great. And everything that I'm peeling off is not wasted either. I have a compost pile outside and I'll just put everything in the compost and then for this one because it's more mature I am going to try to save the seeds and I'll just put them in a jar um, with a little bit of water and leave them for a little while and then I can take the seeds out and dry them and they're good to go. Take all of this and put it in the compost bowl. Usually I have a bigger bowl, but this is what my husband had already taken out and that's fine, I don't wanna wash something else. Let's see what's in here for seeds. Oh yeah, this is, this is definitely mature. So let's take some of the seeds. I don't wanna get the ones that I cut in half, so let's put those in the compost. And I'll try to get some of the seeds into this jar. Oh, there's a lot of seeds in this one. So. Yeah, this is darker on the inside. This is definitely a honey nut squash. How fun. And then hopefully I can save these seeds and grow more of them next year. It might not end up being exactly the same squash. I can't guarantee that these did not cross pollinate, but as long as when they grow, they taste okay, then they're safe to eat and that'll be great. I love saving seeds. It's make sure um, investment in your seeds pay for themselves even more. Um, and whatever ends up in the compost, I try to heat it up enough that most of the seeds die. But I may, I may have some squash growing on my compost next year from all these squash plants I'm going to put in the compost. So that one's done. That's what I have for seeds so far. And let's see what I can get out of this side. I just take a spoon and push firmly and scoop it out. It's good to go. And I'm not really worried about getting all of these seeds. There are so many. I'm just trying to get a good amount in this jar and then when you soak them, all of the 
what's left of the squash comes off of the seeds and then you can just dry them out and use them the next year. And I'm really hoping these are mature enough, but if they're not and nothing grows, that's fine. Um, I would rather try something and maybe have the hope of getting some good produce um, than not try anything at all and then I definitely won't get anything. So it's kind of, that's what I do. I just, I know some things will die and or not everything will make it to fruiting or whatever, but that's fine. I would rather keep trying because there's always that one thing that does really well every year and produces tons and then you can preserve some and put it up and you'll have it to eat the rest of the year and that's great. This is really interesting. This is like two seeds together and they're shaped like a heart. Very interesting. It's like they were fused together inside of the squash. All right. Some of these seeds feel um, like they're not mature. They're very soft. And then the ones that feel hard and are a little plump, those are the ones that I'm saving. All right, and the rest of this can go in the compost. I'm just going to fill this with a little bit of water. And this will just sit for a little while. All right, let's cut up this last squash. And then I'll put this container in the refrigerator. And when it's time for dinner, they'll be ready. All ready for roasting. I'll put the cover on and put this in the fridge. We have seeds to try to grow next year and compost to make soil. Time to roast up my butternut squash. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil and this can't mix honey cinnamon seasoning. It's really good on roasted butternut squash and probably a little bit of salt. I roasted the butternut squash at 350, stirring every so often until it was tender and golden. And this is it with our dinner.